The world is waiting for a pope. Some people have traveled great distances to Rome just to be near the sacred place where the College of Cardinals will choose the next leader of the Catholic Church, inside the Sistine Chapel. The 115 cardinal electors will make that choice in private during what's called the Conclave. The date has been set for Tuesday, March 12, 2013. In a procession behind the cross, the cardinals will walk into the Sistine Chapel singing a litany of saints of the East and West and a series of invocations to Christ. The cardinals then take an oath to faithfully and scrupulously observe the rules of electing a pope. Each swears that if he is elected, he will faithfully fulfill the Petrine ministry as pastor of the Universal Church and will strenuously affirm and defend the spiritual and temporal rights as well as the freedom of the Holy See. They also promise to keep everything having to do with the election secret. The cardinals are being called to an interior silence so that they can listen to the promptings of God's Spirit because they're doing something very, very significant. They're calling for the successor of Peter and the Vicar of Christ. Each day, the cardinals are to recite morning and evening prayer together and can celebrate Mass. They are to listen to scripture and have time for prayer before each ballot is cast and before the ballots are counted. And in the meantime, when everybody is casting their votes, we are praying. So it's like a big cenacle of prayer. This is beautiful. It's the most loving experience how an election should be. I wish that all the elections in the world could be like that, in an atmosphere of prayer and not only in political criteria. All of this, I think, a sense of excitement, a sense of anxiety as well, perhaps. Anxious, well, how is it going to work out? Um, but probably the most solemn, the most difficult one, um, frightening, is when you go with your ballot paper in your hand and hold it up in front of the altar and say, I call on the Lord Jesus, who will be my judge, to witness that I'm, I'm uh, voting for the one I believe to be worthy. That's really a moment of uh, intense, I'd say, emotion, faith, all things, all these emotions come together at that point. If I'm voting for unworthy reasons, I'm actually asking Jesus to judge me, condemn me, in other words. So it's a very, very solemn moment. If the secret ballots don't produce a two-thirds majority, black smoke appears in the smokestack on the chapel's roof, signaling to the world that no pope has been chosen. The selection process can take many votes, during the course of several days. You always get busy, so you're always caught to the, to the need of the moment. But I think uh, it's always on the top of your mind that I, I, I am going to do now something which will not just affect my life, but will affect the life of all the world. I'm, I'm happy in a way that I am not being called to do it again. It's too heavy a burden. Once the ballots reach a two-thirds majority and he accepts the office, white smoke appears in the smokestack to tell the world a pope has been chosen. The cardinals pray inside the Sistine Chapel, then approach the new pope and pay homage to him. During this time, the public gathered in St. Peter's Square wait to find out who has been chosen. Eventually, the senior Cardinal Deacon goes to the central balcony of St. Peter's Basilica and declares to the public, Habemus Papam, we have a Pope. And then the new Pope steps onto the balcony.